this is the new Emsuico Digital ED 90mm f3.5 macro IS Pro Lens, which from now on I'm just going to call the 90mm macro from OM System. It's a 90mm macro lens. What else do you need to know about it? I don't know. Let's go take some photos, find out. Got to be something on here, probably hidden around, hibernating on the underside of this. Let's have a little look. What have we got? Absolutely nothing. Oh no, there's something. There's something just there. I don't know what it is. It's absolutely tiny. There's a little brown blob. It looks really strange. Maybe it's a little, little egg casing. Oh, there's a little guy on the side. I can see a little tiny spider's egg casing. Oh, it's minuscule. And this is where a lens like this really excels because this is crazy close. If insects and bugs are your macro subject of choice, this isn't the right time of year to be testing out a macro lens because it's February, it's the middle of winter, it's cold and it gets darker. Basically, there are no insects around today, but there are some macro things to photograph and even better, I can actually do that in my warm, dry studio because the weather's starting to change. We've got some rain coming in, let's go inside. The pro tag on this lens means that it is dust proof, freeze proof and splash proof, which is kind of useful for a macro lens because they tend to be used in some pretty challenging conditions. The amazing thing about macro photography is the closer you look, the more you find. And there is a world of amazing things right in front of you. And you don't need a big amount of space to see it. In fact, I bought a few things in from the garden because the weather outside has really taken a turn for the worst. And I'm gonna use my Flashpoint Explore 300 flash with the 90 mm macro lens. And I'm gonna use the standard one-to-one -one macro or thereabouts just to fill the frame as I would a standard macro lens and see how this performs. And so far, well, it's looking pretty good. This 90 mm macro from OM System has Sync IS, which means that the lens itself has image stabilization internally, and that communicates with the image stabilization of your OM System or Olympus camera, and the two work together to give you a superb stabilized image. However, if you're on a tripod, the recommendation is to turn the Sync IS on the lens off, which is what I've done. This is a picture taken at full macro, one-to-one -one or thereabouts, but the 90mm macro has a couple of party tricks up its sleeve. The first one is fairly obvious because there is a big button on the side that says S macro. Now, I don't know what S stands for, but I'm gonna call it super macro because it effectively doubles the magnification from one-to-one -to, -one to two to one or two times magnification. Now, as soon as you put it into super macro mode, it makes a little noise. It's changing the lens around inside. And now I can focus a little bit closer. But if that's not enough magnification for you, you can go closer because the 90mm macro is fully compatible with the Olympus OM system two times teleconverter, which I actually don't have. However, I do have the 1.4 converter, which also works. The two times converter will double your magnification again to four times magnification. The 1.4 converter will will make it somewhere in between the two, I guess. Now, I'm gonna definitely use manual focus. I could use autofocus, but I'm gonna switch to manual, and then this is gonna have to come very close indeed. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is crazy. Okay, let's talk about aperture because this lens has a wide open aperture of f3.5. However, the moment you turn on S macro mode, that changes and your maximum aperture becomes f5. That's one stop less. 
pop the 1.4 converter on and you lose another stop. So now my maximum aperture is f7.1. Now, none of that really matters with macro because I am so close to my subject, the depth of field is already really small. So I wanna go for a pretty small aperture to maximize that depth of field. This lens will actually go down to f22, but you're never gonna use that because of diffraction. Diffraction is where you start to lose detail with smaller and smaller apertures. So f8, f11 is about as small as aperture as I like to go, any smaller than that, and I'll start to use focus bracketing and focus stacking to create my images. And there's a function button on the side of the lens. So if I press that, I can turn on focus bracketing or focus stacking because I've programmed the function button to be that exact feature, which is really handy. When it comes to specs, it is 136 millimeters long. It weighs in at 453 grams. It's got a filter thread size of 62 millimeters, but most importantly, it comes with the lens hood included. The autofocus is super fast. So if I set it to infinity and then press the shutter, I can get a photo that quick. And you've got to remember that this is really just a 90 millimeter prime lens. So if you want to use it for portraits or landscapes, you can, it'll work great for that. It's macro where people are really going to use this lens. And when it comes to macro, it's really hard to beat this for its size, its weight, its focal length and its magnification, especially in the micro four thirds world and possibly in the wider photography world in general. It's a great lens. If you want to find out more about it, check out the Adorama website. You'll find links to this lens in the video description below. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.